What is really amazing is all of these different people from different parts of this community coming together. I, in my speech, I just talked about community, and one of the things I can see in this community is there's a lot of care, there's a lot of heart, and there's a lot of creativity. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage Chief Technology and Operations Officer at DocuSign, Kirsten Wolberg. Talk about happiness, that's what we're talking about. So I grew up in Anchorage, Alaska in the 70s. So I know a little bit about pioneering. Back in the 70s in Alaska, we really lived into the model from the, the car license plate, the last frontier. So as a child, essentially, this picture that you see, this was pretty much my view from my childhood bedroom window. Truth be told, though, I hated living in Alaska. Absolutely hated it. By the age of 12, I was making X's on a calendar, just counting down the days until I could escape to the lower 48. I had to get out. But what I didn't realize was that the lessons I learned by being a literal pioneer in Alaska would actually be the lessons that helped me be a successful pioneer in tech in Silicon Valley. The lessons of courage, community, and creativity. I'll start with courage. Essentially, pioneering means you're doing new things, things that have never been tried before. You're braving new trails. You're creating new paths. And that's pretty scary. As a child, I was fearless. I'm not exactly sure where that came from. Maybe it was the fact that I was surrounded by people who were crazy brave. And when I think back, maybe it was the guns. Maybe it was all the guns. Maybe that's what made everybody so brave. But anyhow, I took this fearlessness and I took this courage and I went to the lower 48 for college. I went to USC, and in LA, I was completely and totally ill-prepared for life in the big city. There were so many people. I was hearing foreign languages spoken for the first time. And I was getting lost everywhere I went because everything seemed to look the same. It was just big buildings and lots of people. I could have turned around and gone home. In fact, that's really what most of my peers did from high school. They spent their first semester away at school and then went home for good. Not me. I took a deep breath and I leaned into every single new I could find. I brought all of the courage I could muster. And from college, it took me into a career in financial services. And I have to say, in financial services, a young woman who was outspoken, who was hardworking, and who was super ambitious, this wasn't just new for me. It was new for all of the men in the office, too. So I wanted to be successful. So I studied the men. How were they? doing it? How had they found success? And I started modeling the behavior. I dressed like a man, and in the 80s, that meant that really bad blue suit with the bow tie at the neck. I swore like a man. I was aggressive in meetings like a man. And you want to know what? It worked. It worked, I guess, more accurately until it didn't. Suddenly, by the time I you know, came up in the ranks and was starting to threaten the men, they were seeing me as somebody who might take their job or even worse, be their boss, then it didn't work. I started getting feedback like, you know, you've got sharp elbows. You need to stop your self-promotion. 
tone it down a little bit. And I fought that feedback tooth and nail. I was going to be just as successful as they were. But you know what? After years of continuing with the same story, I realized that what got me to there wasn't going to get me to where I wanted to be. So I had to really reach in and have the courage to change either my location or my tactics. I did both. I left financial services for tech, and I stopped trying to outman the men. I decided I was going to embrace my feminine. I'm a woman. I cannot deny it. And I was going to live into my authentic self. And the great thing about this story is it actually worked, and it's still working. And I hope that through this path, this new path, I have actually created a new way for women to be successful in tech. Courage, community, and creativity. So, community. In Alaska, we know that you absolutely have to rely on the community to be successful. I think in my generation, a lot of us, when we thought about entrepreneurs or innovation, we had this image of a single individual, a single guy in his dark basement, toiling away for days, for weeks, for years, until finally that eureka moment. Well, in Alaska, we all recognize that if you tried to go it alone, it wasn't going to end well. Think about all those Hollywood movies, right? You know, does the bear come into the village and eat all of the villagers? No. The bear waits for that one dumb guy to strap on the, you know, snowshoes and just go out into the wilderness by himself. That's the guy who becomes bear lunch. You know, pioneers recognize that they have to help each other no matter what. The only way you're going to survive is to really draw on the capabilities of the entire community. What are the strengths that can come together to solve any problem, big or small? If you're in Alaska and your car is having trouble and it breaks down and you pull over to the side of the road, what do you think happens? The very next car that passes by pulls over and stops to help, and so does the next car and the next car. And the next car, until suddenly you can't even drive past because everyone is stopped in the middle of the road, and no one goes away, no one goes back on the road until that stranded motorist is either back on the road too, or a tow truck has come to help. It's completely different in LA. What happens in LA if you break down? If this is your, you know, truth, you're on the freeway, you're on the side of the road. It's only. Tail lights and headlights. If anyone even glances in your direction, it's only so they can think in their head, "I am so glad I am not you. I've got places to go, people to see." What's most important in community and to being a successful pioneer is not passing by when somebody else is having a problem. It's being part of that community and doing what you can to help. Given your own unique strengths, I worked at Salesforce. Do you think Mark Benioff is the reason that Salesforce is successful? And Salesforce is a success successful technology pioneering company? No. Mark had a great product vision and a marketing genius, and the man is just wicked intuitive. But it was Dave Molinoff who had the ideas on how to build a multi-tenant architecture. It was Parker Harris and Frank Dominguez who had the ability to build a product, a software as a service application that everybody loved. They called on the entire community to come together and test and test and test until it could be perfect. And Mark drew on the relationships he had with leaders like Larry Ellison and Steve Jobs, so he could learn from their mistakes. And as Utah, as a community, as a tech community, begins to grow and continues to thrive, it's so important to remember: you are not going to be successful as an individual 
or as a single company, you will only be successful if you are taking care of the collective. Courage, community, and creativity. So that brings me to my final point, creativity. Creativity is the phenomenon of creating something new and somehow valuable. I'm kind of worried about the kids of today, because let's face it, I think boredom is a key component to creativity. And with smartphones, TikTok, Snapchat, Instagram, our kids are not bored. Growing up in Alaska, we had summers of endless days. There wasn't camps or summer schools to keep us occupied. It was just this vast expanse of hours of nothingness. And creativity was the key. You know, parents would kick you out of the house and say, don't come back till dinner. That was the nice parents. The mean parents said, don't come back till sundown. And that wasn't until two in the morning. So that was, that was kind of harsh. But I remember one of those days when my mom was saying, out, out, blow the stink off. She handed me a box of dry jello. Jello? Why jello? Honestly, I have no idea. But that box of jello made that day turn from a ho hum day to a woo hoo day. I've got a box of jello. That 30 cent box of jello turned into mixed with water, medicine for our hospital, mixed with glue, blood for the fake bike scene we staged. There were tens, dozens of different creative ideas that that box of Jell-O brought. More value than 12 tickets to Disneyland, which incidentally would cost you about $1,800 today. I took these lessons from childhood to companies like Salesforce, PayPal, and now DocuSign all technology pioneers. This is where I saw companies take creativity and build it into the core culture of the company. It wasn't something that, you know, words they put onto coffee mugs. They put it into every process, into every hire, and they measured it by how much their customer, how much passion their customers had for their product. At DocuSign, we call this DocuLove. I kid you not, as soon as I tell somebody that I work for DocuSign, the very next words I hear are, I love DocuSign. It is such an incredible feeling. And our customers love us because we put the customer at the center of all the creativity that we put into the product. We're never satisfied. We continue to say, what if? What if? You could have an entire end-to-end -end agreement process without any friction. Everything happens seamlessly. You could prepare an agreement, you could sign it, you could act on the terms in that agreement, and you could even manage all the information from the process and the terms itself. Imagine how great that would be. Well, that's not the creativity of the future, that's the creativity of now. I'll take an example that I think everybody in the audience can relate to. So, uh, a job offer, an employment agreement. You have found that perfect engineer, or maybe you are that perfect engineer. Everyone's interviewed, they believe this is the person, this is the woman we want to hire for the job. And so, you start to negotiate on the offer, and you're able to do that in the agreement itself, without faxing or emailing back and forth. And then you come to terms, your candidate goes off to Hawaii, sitting on the beach, they receive their offer letter in DocuSign, open it up on the beach, drinking a Mai Tai, and two clicks, they now are an employee. All that information comes back to your company through API calls and workflows that are kicked off. That person is added to ADP, their payroll is set up goes to IT, we've provisioned a laptop that has all of the permissions that they need to be really productive on their first day at work. Goes to HRS and sets up the employee. This isn't a what if of the future. This is actually possible today based on the creativity of the engineers and the product team at DocuSign and the partnership with our customers. This is only one use case of literally thousands. 
in how, by bringing creativity into the culture of the company, we are creating solutions that absolutely are essential for our customers. I think there are many, many creative souls in, in this audience who have the ability to do something new and create value. Courage, community, and creativity. Hopefully, these lessons from my childhood as a literal pioneer can be used by some of you to create your own future and your own path. Thank you.